Now we're on the final part of this tutorial, which talks about the synthesized IR section of the plugin. This is if you don't actually want to use an IR file, but you want to go completely synthesized for your reverb effect. Most things are going to remain the same here. Uh, a noticeable difference is going to be this density envelope that you get. Density has everything to do with the amount of reflection that you're going to get off of these synthesized surfaces. So high density just means more synthesized reflections. We can see here we're starting with an initial density of zero, so zero reflections occurring. And then after a certain ramp time, let's set ours at about 0.27 seconds just to hear the difference, uh, then we're going to reach our end density. Okay, so right now it's at very high, it's at 100%. Uh, we can bring that down and we're actually going to see our waveform change here. So you can see a less dense waveform there. Let's bring it up a little bit. And this reflection shape is actually going to change, well, the shape of some of the initial reflections that we're going to see in this file. A low reflection value is going to give us a sharper contour to some of our reflection waveforms here at the beginning of the audio file. As we raise it, we're going to see them smooth out. You see this exponential curvature to the initial waveform response. Let's take a listen to how the density parameters affect our sound. In terms of its practical use, reflection shape is going to have to do with uh, the types of materials that are in your virtual room. So a high reflection value is going to give you a smoother reverb, which a smaller reflection value is going to give uh, sharper and more clustered uh, reverberations. Now the definition is set as a percentage of your overall length of this file. Alright, so if I set it to 50% here, after I reach halfway through this file or this length of time, it's going to start degrading the quality of the audio, uh, which does a couple things. It emulates something called reverb diffusion. So as the tail of that reverb comes in, it's of lesser recorded quality. And it also saves some CPU power. So it's never made much of a difference to me, but uh, if you're someone who's trying to save CPU, that's one way you can do it. All right, so we've covered every part of the Space Designer plugin. If you found this helpful, be sure to check out some of my other in-depth tutorials and subscribe as new ones come out. Let's close by listening to all the tracks that we made for this demo.